Hello Chip Dippers. Well, in a recent video, I showed you this. It's the Plus 4 Mini. But although the Plus 4 Mini was just a big April Fool, like me, I got a ton of comments from people saying that they wished it wasn't, and actually wished it was real. But what you might not know, unless you watched Let's Explore the Plus 4, is there actually was a Plus 4 Mini um, of sorts. It's the Commodore 116 basically a 16 kilobyte Commodore C16 in a miniaturized version of the Plus 4 casing and designed again by Ira Velinsky. And if you haven't heard of the C116 before, it might be because it was mainly only sold in Germany and Hungary. However, I never want to leave you Hungary, so um, <clears throat> thanks, thanks to a friend of the channel, Pete, we've found one. Well, I mean, sort of. Yeah, not only is it missing its keys, but it generates no picture whatsoever. Oh dear. Well, let's team up with guest chef Pete, AKA. We'll send this dish back to the kitchen for refiring and see if we can end up with a plus four mini that's good enough to eat. Well, I mean, type on. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Where's she go? Welcome. In Let's Explore the Plus 4, we discovered that the Plus 4 and C116 were part of Commodore's 264 series, which included the 264, aka Plus 4. Do you sell the Commodore Plus 4? We stopped selling that when I was like minus 7 years old, back in the 80s, 85. That's quite recently then. Not, yeah. I mean, not too, not too far around then, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the range included the Commodore C16, the Commodore 364, which was never released, I can pay purple and of course, RC116, not RC, just C. And this range was announced at the recent CES in 1983 by Jack Trammell himself, who sadly passed away on April 8th, 2012. So on this anniversary week of his passing, let's do him and these machines proud and bring this one back to life. So I mentioned in the intro that this machine was putting out no video signal. Well, that wasn't quite the full story. In fact, there was nowhere to plug the video cable in. And if we open it up, we can see why. It looks like a previous owner removed the RF modulator altogether. So it's no wonder we can't get a picture. But luckily we have a spare. So we solder that back into place and reconnect this one trace at the bottom right. Looking A-OK. -okay. Also, we need to replace the voltage regulator that had some problems. Nice. Well, with that work done, let's turn it on and see what we get. Oh, uh, nothing. Oh, there's a reason for that. See, somebody has removed the TED chip from this machine. <laughs> and here's a reminder of what that same TED chip does, this time in the plus four. It also boasted the superior MOS technologies, lovely -ly 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 named TED, all-in-one video sound and I.O. chip, instead of the separate VIC-2 and SID chips of the Commodore 64. And the TED, meaning text display, had an impressive 121 colors, almost unprecedented for the time. Now, save your booze, but there's another problem. In testing the processor, this time the 8501 in the C116, in another machine, it turned out to be faulty. So we'll pop that out, literally. Unfortunately, we don't have a replacement, but we may have another solution. But while I'm on the subject of the CPU, it's interesting that some people compared the C116 to the ZX Spectrum, perhaps because of its identical rubber keys or the lack of hardware sprites. But in fact, the Spectrum was over twice as fast. And speaking of faster processors, this is the 6510 from a Commodore 64. And we found a little hack that will allow us to use that 
in place of the 8501 in the Commodore 116 T4. <clears throat> well, let's turn it on again. All right, so now the machine is in monitor mode. And what this means is that everything's working, but it's not displaying a basic prompt. And if it's not displaying a basic prompt, well, the culprit is probably the basic chip. Now, unfortunately, again, we don't have a spare one of those, but what we do have is this blank chip, which everyone knows is the W27C512, right? Well, anyway, we just flash basic to that blank chip and we're back to basic. Yay! Come on, kids. And we've got over 12,000 bytes free. Wow, what we could do with all of that memory. Well, everything's now working on the PCB, but what about that keyboard? Yeah, this is the real challenge here. And much though I wish we were missing zero keys, we're actually missing the zero key, as well as X, Shift, and of all things, the Commodore key. Sorry, Jack. So as we open things up here, we can see that the previous owner has tried to repair some of these struts that hold this keyboard support frame in place using a soldering iron, and has left a bit of a charred mess. So we'll do a bit of a better job on that, hopefully. But to understand how this all fits together, let's blow things up with an exploded view. Not literally. Seeing how much went into that, it's incredible to think that they retailed this at 99 pounds in the UK. But as you also saw in there, this piece here is the keyboard PCB, and it's what makes contact with the keys, or the keys make contact with. In this case, the owner's tried to improve that conductivity, but has gone a bit crazy with the sandpaper. What wasn't such a crazy idea is they used these U-bent copper staple kind of things to also improve conductivity on the pad side under the key. But over time, that copper has corroded or oxidized, and now looks more like this, which explains why most of the keys probably weren't working at all. So we'll take those out, and what we're gonna do is get these little conductive pads that are used to repair TV remote controls, and they just fit perfectly onto the original pads of the C116. We'll also just soften out some of that sandpapering work with a finer sandpaper. And finally, we'll use some PVB varnish around the non-conductive areas just to tidy things up. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, those keys. Here's where the fun begins in just a moment. There is no spoon, apart from this one. Yep, this is a plaster mix, and we're gonna mix this up to make a mold. You see, I think somebody removed these keys to repopulate another machine, and that's just not good enough. So we're gonna put them back. We'll start off by putting electrical tape under the holes. Let me choose that because it adheres really well to the rubber. Next, we use some 3M foam tape to create a barrier or a dam or a reservoir. Damn, whoever did this. <clears throat> and we use hot snot, or the snot of gods, to secure it in place. Yep, we're a big fan of hot glue here at Retro Recipes. And then here's our plaster mix. And speaking of recipes, kind of looks like Greek yogurt. Or should I say yogurt? That reminds me, uh, someone actually once threw yogurt at me. And I turned to my friend next to me and I said, how dare he? <clears throat> No, I was actually really angry. I'm lactose intolerant, but let's hope this keyboard isn't. We just pour the yogurt, uh, the plaster mix, 
into the reservoir. And here it is, just a few minutes later. We have a perfect negative impression of those rubber keys. So let's turn a negative into a positive. We're going to use a silicone rubber mix for this, and we ordered some medium grey dye to add to that mix, but as you can see it was actually a very light grey. And with the mix already prepared, we're going to have to act fast to try to darken it, which led to an idea. Hello! <laughs> oh, yes, yes, burn my hand. Entourage and another everybody. Yep, you guessed it, charcoal. So we'll grind this up in the retro recipes, pestle and mortar, and then add it to our silicone rubber mix. Mmm, tasty. And then we pour the mix into the mold with that 3M tape around it again, wait for it to set, and then later when we peel away the tape, we're left with this delicious looking slab. There's definitely a couple of usable candidates for keys in there. So we just cut around them so that they match the hole of the missing keys. Now, admittedly, getting a perfect color match is going to be near on impossible, but these keys are going to work, they feel the same, and they're going to allow us to use this machine once again. I can live with that. And there's all four of them in place. And then all we'll do is glue the undersides using some more of that silicone. However, the keys still didn't work right. And upon inspecting this ribbon cable that connects the C116 keyboard to the motherboard, we found this broken trace. So it's time for a quick repair job on the ribbon cable. But then the keyboard still didn't work right. And it turned out that this trace, this large trace here, if we look at it under the microscope, you can see that sanding job that the other user had done had actually broken this trace completely. So we can repair that with this piece of wire. If we hadn't been able to repair it, we could have actually designed a whole new PCB and sent it away to PCB Way to be printed. They still have a New Year's sale going on, I know, and their advanced PCBs are up to 30% off. And as we all know, PCB stands for Pete's C116 Beauty, doesn't it? Well, anyway, speaking of beauty, it's time to wrap up this project and put everything back together, which means recreating these keyboard support struts that the previous owner had tried to reinstate using his blowtorch. So with that in place, and after we've given the case a nice rub down and wash, let's take a look at the before and afters. and all the keys now work perfectly. But I know what you're thinking. What about the letters on the keys? Well, that's where you come in. We want to know if you have any great solutions to reinstating that lettering without using things like stickers. It could be screen printing or, or just a really steady hand with a pen or some other kind of printing method. Let us know what you think would work and feel free to like and subscribe so you can follow any updates on this project. But more than that, what do you think about the real Plus 4 Mini? Does it live up to its name of 116, which is considerably more than 64? Or does it deserve its reputation as a lesser ZX Spectrum? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Comment below and cheerio. Mm -hmm.